What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And this one I want to break down what's going on with Tesla Spy, Nvidia, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers. I'm going to break down what's happening with the economic calendar going into tomorrow, what you should be watching for in terms of earnings, when I think it's going to likely pan out on the charts going into tomorrow and beyond. But before I break into all this information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Mumu link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Mumu with the link down below and deposit $100 into the account, you are guaranteed five free stocks. If you deposit $1,000, you're guaranteed up to 15 free stocks. And this offer ends very, very soon in just a couple of weeks. Anyways, guys, when it comes to the market, we saw some very, very interesting volatility. In my video from yesterday, I mentioned that there are two possibilities on SPY. Either SPY starts this little sell-off coming all the way back down to 510 or so as soon as today, or we get one more little pop and then we end up dropping back down. Now, today we did actually see the market holding up for most of the day. It actually continued to push. We saw this nice break of the all-time high again, grabbing liquidity and triggering a lot of stops. But then at the very end of the day, the market sold off pretty hard. We went from 514 all the way back down to 511 and SPY did end up coming back down. Uh, but despite that, we did see more stocks selling off even more aggressively like Tesla. These are very close to what I was expecting yesterday. Tesla got this sell off as we were talking about. Rivian, SoFi, they all joined the crowd. Uh, ARM also joined it. Supermicro broke, broke its all-time high as we predicted. We talked about how this had potential to push uh, because of the big news that came out. Russell 2000 sold off, Apple sold off as expected, QQQ sold off as expected, but NVIDIA was stronger than what I was expecting. I thought NVIDIA would actually uh, not be this strong, but it's still holding up nicely, so there's still potential for it to hold up. But we'll all be watching that just to be safe. Besides that, everything else is pretty close to expectations. Even Coinbase did relatively well as we predicted. So, so far, so good from the market. So far, so good from predictions. Now the question is, what's going to happen from here? I want to talk about that a little bit later into this video. First, let's talk about something else. We're getting a lot of talk right now about the market continuing to perform very, very well alongside many bonds out there. But this is important to note because uh, right now, sentiment for the markets is not as bad as some people may have thought. There's a lot of sentiment out there that the market is going to crash and this and that. But there are a lot of analysts that have some positive views. I've been seeing a lot of that as well. Uh, when looking at the fear and greed index, right now the market's at extreme greed still. We're st we've been stuck here for quite some time, but there's no sign of the market breaking yet. There's no sign of us turning quite yet on SPY and the others. So the market's going to remain bullish as long as we remain in that trend. I'll show you guys the trend in just a couple of minutes. But for now, the market's still decent. A market momentum is still extremely greedy, but there's no shift in this yet. So the market's not shifting yet. The VIX, on the other hand, is coming back down. It's still trading sideways around the 50 EMA, very indecisive. But there's still not really a whole lot for me to say about it because it's still kind of choppy. And the market's kind of continuing to hold up very well. For economic data, tomorrow is going to be an interesting day. Tomorrow is Tuesday, March 5th. Please remember that 15 minutes after the market opens, we have the S&P Global Composite PMI coming out. Then uh, 30 minutes after the market opens at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have the ISM Services PMI, we have the Services Employment, Services New Orders, and New Orders is very important for inflationary data alongside services prices because they're very forward-looking. So watch for some volatility when all this data comes out for the first 15 and 30 minutes of the day tomorrow. And then after that, all that's left is essentially just borrow from the Fed giving two speeches, and that's pretty much it. It's very, very uh, quiet day for the most part. Uh, we do have quite a bit of data for the first 30 minutes. So we'll see what this causes. It's going to kind of like set the, the tone for the entire day. For earnings, please note that we have GitLab coming out. It just came out today. And then before the market opens tomorrow, we have Neo announcing its earnings alongside Target. So for GitLab, unfortunately, despite having decent earnings overall, revenue is $163 billion, uh, 163 million, excuse me, not billion, million dollars. They're up 33% year over year, and their net loss per share was 23 cents, not as bad. But the problem is their fiscal 2024 highlights were not as strong as what many analysts were expecting. And then going into the 2025 forecast, their earnings are not as strong for guidance. Guidance is not that great for them. And this is the reason why we saw this thing kind of sell off the way it did. Looking at their projections for 2025, things are not looking as great when it comes to their overall average revenue. So not so great for their outlook, not best of guidance. And that's why GitLab is still selling off despite having decent earnings. So that's not a good piece of news for them. With that being said, if you guys are interested, make sure you watch Neo tomorrow morning. I, I'm expecting some high volatility for it and we'll see what happens. But now let's talk about the charts. How are things looking in my honest opinion? So I was talking about this pattern on SPY, how 
we have a tendency of essentially just like peaking on either Fridays or Mondays. Then we start to sell off a little bit before rebounding again. Well, this trend is still uh, evident. It's still present. And we're going to be watching to see how SPY reacts to this. Now, if SPY can get back above 5, 12.5, we could push higher. If we continue to sell off, you want to see how it reacts to around this balance right here, this 5 uh, 511.25 area. If we lose this, 510 is coming, followed by the 508 area. In my opinion, what do I think is going to happen? Here's my prediction. We might see a little pop again tomorrow, but there is a risk of this dropping a little bit more. I could see that happening, especially because when you look at the daily chart, this might be forming a topping candlestick. And the four hour is showing a little bit of weakness. So I might see a test of our 20 EMA get very close to 510 and then try to bounce off that. So I do see it coming down just a little bit more, but then I think it's going to try to rebound. I don't think it's going to crash or anything like that. I do just think it's going to be very minor. So watch for that very, very carefully. Now let's talk about the big stock everyone is watching right now. And that's Tesla stock. What's happening to Tesla? So unfortunately, Tesla got a big drop in their deliveries for the month of February. And it was one of the weakest months we've gotten in about 14 months, right? Not good for them in their Chinese sales. And based off what we're seeing, everything cannot be solely attributed to just China having their uh, little holiday, the, the Chinese New Year holiday. It's not just that. There, there are also fears about demand issues and things like that affecting Tesla. So looking at Tesla, we sold off very aggressively. I warned everyone that Tesla had this range. I've been talking about this for many days. And whichever way Tesla breaks, expect a big move. So if we broke 205, we would have been bullish. If we lost 198, we would have been bearish. And lo and behold, we lost 198 and Tesla just continued to fall very hard after that as we essentially predicted. Now, I also warned you guys about this sell-off because I said yesterday, when you look at the Chinese sales numbers that came out, BYD was not looking good, NIO wasn't looking good, Xbox wasn't looking good, Leo, that's why the entire EB market saw this big rug pull. This also affected Rivian and the others. Tesla failed to hold this critical support at 190. We came down to this 180, 188 zone, essentially. And as we're losing this support right here, the next critical support is going to be closer to 184 and 182. So you want to be very, very careful with Tesla. So on Tesla, it looks bearish on the daily time frame. Going to be looking for a little rebound tomorrow. It might back to the 190 to 192 area. And if you get a rejection, we could actually continue to sink a little bit lower. And we could see 184 as a possibility. So please be very careful. This chart does look kind of weak to me. And I do think we could come all the way down here. Uh, there's no sign of a much of a bounce today. That's the reason why I still favor bears a bit more. So be very careful on Tesla. There's a lot of fear right now. The triple Q. Okay, we predicted that this thing would, could come down. And the reason for that is because of, hold on, let me do one thing. Sorry about this, guys. Uh, the QQQ, in my opinion, did have some bearish potential because of this right here. This thing started to turn right here. You guys can see this nice little turn that happened. And we're trying to hold right now around this 444 area. If we lose this, I could be looking for a push down to about 442. And I'm talking about tomorrow. If we fail to hold 444, watch 442. If that fails us, we have a breakout area to be testing at 440. So there is a risk of this coming down a bit. So be very, very careful, guys. I want everyone to just be mindful of that. And then on top of this, if we do continue to sink, we'll be watching the support to see how well we hold around 442. Resistance is at 445 to 446. It might pop a little bit, but there is a risk of it retesting 444. And it might shuffle a little bit in the 444 area, then sell off to 442. So please be very, very careful. For NVIDIA... NVIDIA is still very strong. It's been pushing very, very nicely. Got this little rejection. It's trying to rebound in the after hours. And it actually went even higher than what I was expecting. So very, very good for NVIDIA. This thing just continued to pop like there is no tomorrow. Uh, this is what helped the QQQ actually hold up a little bit. So I'm going to be watching this zone right here. This is 860. This is like 862 area because this is where we had the previous support becoming resistance. Uh, get past that. So then we have this zone right here, 868. And then if we break past this, Watch resistance from right here. Uh, there's 872 followed by 875, I believe, like around that area. So a lot of these tight resistance areas to be watching for just to see how this thing ends up performing. And in my opinion, I think it's very important to be very patient with NVIDIA as a whole. So as far as NVIDIA goes, uh, in my opinion, this thing is bullish. That's the first thing you have to remember. It's been on a, been on a very, very nice uptrend, continuing to push and push and push. 
but you also want to be careful because of the facts that we're continuing to hit these resistance levels and if the market turns it could slow things down for us so it might push a little higher try to retest these higher levels like 868 or so we'll see if this thing establishes a higher high or not but we're going to look for another attempt to push higher and we'll see where nvidia tries to stop at it did get stopped at 872 ish very close to that range uh, today so we might be retesting that area and we'll see if you reject or not but i do i do think it's going to push a little higher it's going to try to push a little higher from here early tomorrow and then we'll see where we end up projecting so watch 862 868 872 is resistance it should pop to one of those levels maybe by very close to 870 and it might reject after that so just be very careful but i do see it trying to push a little higher for now for apple Apple is, in my opinion, still not looking that great. It is, it's been dropping very hard. It is due for a bounce soon, but we're not ready yet. So it's trying to base at 174. Uh, watch that as a key support. 174 is our support. We have resistance at 175 and also around uh, 176 flat. If we break past that, we can actually redraw this. So I'm, I'm going to be watching this resistance right here. Uh, but basically, if we do break past this 175.75 area, 176.5 is coming next and we have this yellow trend line as our resistance to the next level to be watching for overall the trend is still bearish it's been sinking and sinking and sinking not looking too great so we'll see how well this ends up holding but please be very careful guys i want to warn you all to be careful on apple i think it's going to come back down to 174 and just kind of consolidate a bit right here and, and we'll see if we can get a rebound or not but watch and see if we could base at 174 it's barely holding this for now if we lose this 173.5 is coming to 172 my prediction is it comes down to 174 maybe it comes down a little bit lower and just trade sideways from 174 for the time being i think it's going to consolidate very very soon all right so that is it for the main tickers i typically talk about spy is starting to turn just a little bit but we have to see if we get a bearish cross in the ppo uh, it's still like holding up decently so it might be a little decline that comes before it tries to bounce again so watch for that very carefully neo has its earnings coming out so we will see if this thing's about to get another rug pull all the way down below five or if this thing tries to rebound past eight uh i'm sorry 5.7 then 6.24 so i'll have to be i'll have to be watching for that rivian in my opinion is looking kind of weak we're about to get a bearish cross in the ppo if we do get that a bigger drop is going to be coming all the way down to 10.5 and potentially back down to these lower levels so be careful on rivian it's looking very weak on the four hour time frame uh so far looking a little bit weak right now i could see this test 8.36 and then try to bounce but this came down amidst some new news that came out arm looking a little bit weak i'm going to be looking for a 134 to be tested we'll see if it bounces off here or not so i do see a little bit downside potential super micro pushed very nicely to 1150 but now it's starting to turn a little bit i think it's going to be retesting this area right here this like uh, 1000 it's very close to 1000 might test 1000 we'll see if it holds or not if we lose 1000 watch 956 if you hold it it could try to rebound but look for a test of 1000 see if we bounce or not for palantir palantir in my opinion you, you know we lost the 50 ema the downside i talked about is coming and you can see right here if we continue to sell off if we continue to hold below that there is a risk of it coming down towards 22.8 so there's some weakness on palantir for the russell 2000 i told you it might pop and drop exactly as predicted it popped and dropped watch 204.6 if we lose this look, we're going to be testing 202 so i do anticipate some downside on this so be a little bit careful for let's see what else is there microsoft microsoft in my opinion is looking a little bit weak uh this might retest 412 but don't forget guys it's not the end for microsoft we still have a possible inverse head and shoulders this could also be attempted to form still like a cup and handle so if it does come down a little bit it could still try to rebound later so there's still bullish potential for this like for the more medium term but for the short term it does look like it's going to decline towards 412 just temporarily for amd right amd this is slowing down just slightly it's not that bad it's very flat so it might just trade sideways between 200 and 210 for some time it might decline a little bit just a little bit towards 200 and just trade sideways but it's not looking too bad for the vix the vix is trying to pop just a little bit this is a bullish looking candlestick that formed on it if it tries to push a little bit we could see 13.74 if the market sees a little decline so watch for that just to be safe i'm going to be watching that very very uh carefully so for others out there like the dollar index still kind of weak we'll have to see if this thing can try to hold above our 
200 EMA at 103 uh, 103.8. If we do do so, 103.9 is a possibility. So we'll see if we get a bounce or not. For Coinbase, Coinbase is still on a rip because of bullish news for crypto. It's still bullish, okay? There's no sign of this stopping. Our next target is going to be around at 240. If we break that, 250 is coming next. Uh, I still think it looks bullish. To turn bearish, you want to see at least 225, but it's still holding up very nicely. I mentioned yesterday it could push more, and that's what's happening so far. For Google, this is coming down. We talked about this yesterday. 136, we lost that. There's 132 right here. It's still a little bit weak. It is trying to base here. So we'll see if it tries to rebound or not. It might get a little rebound attempt to back test like 134 to 136, then come back down. Uh, in my opinion, it's still a little bit weak. So it might kind of test 134 to 136. Could test that, then come back down towards 130. And then we'll see if we get a bounce or not around that area. So watch for that very carefully. For Amazon, Amazon, in my opinion, is looking a little bit weaker. So it, it popped and dropped exactly as predicted. So watch 176. If Amazon fails to uh, break that, it could try to bounce off that. If it if it breaks through 176, 174 is coming. But watch for a test of 176. It's going to test that tomorrow. I think it has a little bit more of a decline coming, and we'll see if we get a bounce or not. If we fail, I think 174 is on the table. So watch for that carefully. We're looking a little bit weak on Amazon. It does look a little bearish, like it's going to turn down here, especially towards these imbalances. So I'll be watching that as well. I also want to add that I think this is also important on the daily on Amazon. Uh, I think this this could be a turning candlestick. And I think this imbalance could actually attract it lower. We actually have this gap right here. Uh, so we'll see about that. So we'll see if this ends up playing out or not. Just wanted to double check that. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, I do believe that there is a risk of downside coming. So 176 to 174 are possibilities. If we lose 176, so watch for that first. And I do think there's a risk of downside. Meta, it pushed to 505 and rejected. It's going to be testing 494 in my opinion. If we lose 494, a bigger drop is coming. If we hold it, we could bounce. But I think this imbalance right here could actually lead it even lower. So if we lose 494, 492 is coming, followed by uh, 490 right about here. So I think there's going to be a risk of it dropping lower. Uh, but I have to see how well it holds around 494 first. If we lose that, a bigger drop is coming. If we bounce off it, it is what it is. But I do believe we're going to be testing it very soon. All right, guys. So that is it for the video. I thank all of you so much for listening. I thank you guys for your attention. So please have a great rest of the day. And hopefully this video and this analysis was helpful. A lot of tickers are showing some weakness. So I do anticipate the market has a little bit more selling coming. And then we'll see what happens with the economic data tomorrow morning. With that being said, I'll see you guys tomorrow in the daytime. Take care. Do what you have to do, guys. Watch your levels and technicals and always manage risks. Non-financial advice. Have a great day. Enjoy the evening and peace out.